Okay, welcome to my tutorial on AP Classroom. This is geared specifically towards AP teachers um, who are doing remote learning, and this is a way you can do secure assessments. It's also a way you can do practice tests and quizzes and just kind of figure out where students are at. Um, so this is the general homepage to get into AP, myap.collegeboard.org. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Uh, AP's got a lot of resources. We don't have time to go through them all, um, and I don't know them all well enough to share. You should see here your your classes, your AP classes, and their uh, number of students enrolled in them. So I have 15 in period 6, 14 in, in period 4. Once you're on this page, we're looking for the AP Classroom. So it'll take us to AP Classroom. On AP Classroom, there are a lot of resources. So just to show you what I have for environmental science real quick, it splits out my course in units. Under each unit, I'm currently in Unit 8. I have all the topics that they expect me to cover for that unit. If I click on a topic, it'll take me to that specific page in the CED. Um, so I'm going to close this tab. I don't need to see that right now. I can also click this button here to show specific questions on that topic. I'm going to show you an easier way to do it. They also talk about the skills that each topic has here. And so these color-coded skills are found in the CED. I believe they probably vary for each AP class, um, but I don't actually know what they mean for non-AP AP environmental science. So if I wanted to make a assessment, right, this could be a test, it could be a quiz, it could just be a practice thing they're supposed to do at home. So that's totally up to you. I'm going to go click on the question bank at the top here. So if I click question bank, it'll take me to the bank of all the questions. Um, you see there's 1,039 questions in the bank for AP Environmental Science. These are both going to be free response questions here and multiple choice questions here. It organizes them by unit. It also links them to skills. And so the topic selections up here, the filters up here, are pretty robust to making a topic. So let's say I wanted to do a unit eight quiz because we're about halfway through unit eight. So first thing I would want to do is pick from the topic over here. So like I said, we're in unit eight. I'm just going to scroll down to unit eight. Um, these correspond to each of those topics in the unit. So we have currently covered endocrine disruptors. We've covered eutrophication. We've covered pops and bioaccumulation, uh, lethal dose, dose response, and pathogens, and human health. So those would be the topics I want. Once I've selected them, I'm just going to click outside this selection window. Uh, if you look down here, it's changed to all the topics I picked. Right, So I don't have anything from uh, the early ones. We're all from the later ones. Uh, other things, you've got question type. So I'm going to start with my multiple choice questions first. So filter out the others. There are you can choose exam alignment. So if you pick perfect, it's really just going to choose old released AP exam questions. Um, so strong is probably fine. I don't even think they have any moderates or minimals for environmental science, but probably steer away, away from the mineral, minimals. Other things here, you can adjust the skills, right? So these are the skills that were highlighted earlier. I like to just kind of leave this open. Um, I guess if you've ran a few of these, you could identify what skills your students are weak on and maybe target those, but I'm going to leave it open for now. I just want to get some multiple choice questions on my list, so I'm going to click the Add button. As I click Add, it appears over here. So sometimes you may want to read the question before you hit Add. So if you click the question title over here, it'll give you a box um, that shows the question. So a laboratory study, etc., etc., etc. The Scoring details are hidden on the right side over here. So if I wanted to see, you know, what's the right answer to this, what's what um, justification do they have for it? So it's all all written over here. So it, it tells you um, the answer as well. So you can kind of gauge whether it's a question you want or not. This is question two. If I like question two, I can also click add from this screen. So I can hit add here and it'll add it to my list. I can click the little arrow to go to the next and see question three. So there's a question about endocrine disruptors. I like this one as well. I'm going to click add to it. Um, something worth mentioning is that this question here is to the rewrite. So if your course has been rewritten, you may want to pay attention to how the questions are worded. I know this is from the rewrite because it only goes to option D. If I go back, this question here is from the original um, version of AP Environmental Science where there were five choices. So, you know, for my purposes, it's not a huge deal. It may be a bigger problem for you. 
go. Let's add a few more questions. I'm just going to add a couple quick to just build an assessment. I'm going to get 10 of them. Um, May I'm out of so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we need two more. Let's just add this one and let's add that one. Okay. Um, some interesting things. So you can see that there are some orange bars on the side over here. All the ones I've clicked add on have an orange bar. This question here, endocrine, endocrine disruptor effects, has an orange bar next to it and I haven't added it yet. So if I put my mouse over the orange bar, um, if I wasn't screencasting, it would tell me that it has been used previously, right? So it's telling me that I use this on my endocrine disruptors quiz. So this is from an earlier assignment I had given the students um, about endocrine disruptors. And so it's, it's warning me that so I don't use it again. If I click this orange bar here, it's going to show me this question also was on the endocrine disruptors quiz. And so do I want to use it on this one as well? You know, you may not want to double up the same question, or maybe you that's your goal. This was a hard question the first time around, so we're going to include it again. So that's something um, that's in here. This part is also unique. So if you look on the, the bar over here, I have a question, a Moose River experimental design set. So experimental design is a type of problem in environmental science. And so your topics may have similar, you know, problem types that have several questions that accompany it. There are three other questions. So if I click the three other questions, it'll show them to me up here. And so I might want to put them in and it'll kind of pull them all together. So the passage that they read for Moose River is not printed three times or doesn't show up three times. They get to see it in the format or similar to the format what the exam looks like. From this page, um, the preview button is always nice to take a look at. Right, so this is what they would see when they're taking it. Uh, they get their progress bars. There's 12 questions now because I added the last two. They can pick um, by clicking on them. In the preview, it doesn't let me answer the questions. Uh, but when they click on it, it'll highlight it and give them the option to move to the next one. So that's the preview. Uh, once you're happy with it, you need to make a name for the quiz. So I'll call this Unit 8 Midway Check. Seems like a good name. And then hit Save Quiz. Once you've saved it, it's going to show up in the Assign tab over here. And so this is the previous one. Here's the one we just made. It has our topics tested on it. it, has our skills tested on it. From here, I can edit it if I want to go back and adjust any of it. I can also assign it. So if I click Assign, it gives me check boxes for my classes. So both of my classes run side by side, so I would check both of these. From this, I can choose to unlock it now, so it'll be open as soon as I click this Assign button, or I can choose to schedule it. So I can schedule out ahead. This is our spring break week, so maybe I want to schedule it for the 24th to begin, and I'll pick the due date as the 27th. So now when I click Assign, it'll open up on their AP Classroom page from the 24th and end on the 27th. Can also choose a time limit to do it. So our questions were we had twelve questions to it. So let's give them uh, twenty minutes to do twelve questions. Um, I can assign it as a print test. I can scramble it. So the interesting thing down here though is this use secure lockdown browser. So before your assignment start date, ensure students' computers, tablets have the lockdown browser installed. This is a separate app. So this would be for someone that is you know really concerned about test security. You could choose to do this. It essentially prevents them from leaving the window um, that they're taking the test in. So it's an option. It's not something that I've used before, so I can't really speak too much on it. Um, and I like to leave this box open as well. And so I click Assign. It'll say Assignment Added to Two Classes. So if I go over to Progress and I check my quizzes on here, I have the Midway Check. It's open on the 24th so they don't see it yet and it closes on the 27th um, so I can choose to open it up early if I'd want to I don't have to my endocrine disruptors quiz is one I made before this video to kind of make sure I knew what I was talking about um, and you can see I opened it up at 440 and it closes on the 24th so this one will close the other one will open up um, I haven't had anyone take it yet it's spring break so they're obviously not checking AP classroom right now uh, but you can see the potential to add in 
um, results here as we go. There's a results button. I don't have any results to, to see yet because they haven't taken it taken it yet. Um, but at any rate, that's the tutorial on how to make your own uh, quiz in AP Classroom and how to use the resources provided to you in AP Classroom. The question bank I've been I've seen is super super helpful. Um, a lot of pressure off me writing questions because I get questions written in the AP style, they're relevant, they're sortable by topic. It's it's been fantastic. This one is, in, is something I want to highlight too. Your AP class may have these. These are their practice exams. So 2020 practice exam multiple choice. This is 80 multiple choice questions that have, you know, a strong correlation to the AP exam. You can assign this as a whole thing. Uh, same with the free response questions. They have this shield next to them because these are protected documents and they don't want students putting questions out on the, on the internet or anything like that. Um, that's it for me for this. Um, through this question bank, you can access progress. Um, you can see results. And so you could transfer the results straight into my backpack if you're going to take these for grades. Um, but if you have any questions on it or concerns about how to use AP Classroom, please feel free to email me at wandeld at esj.org. And I'd be happy to assist um, and give you some advice. So thank you for watching and good luck using AP Classroom.